Hello and welcome. This is gonna be my 2024 reading. It's gonna take a little while, so I invite you to stay with me. I'm gonna do a couple different portions of it, so I guess I'll put timestamps in the description box. Uh, <laughs> this is a lot of information and a lot of stuff that I've been working on getting together, but obviously the whole thing is channeled and that means that I worked with my guides in order to bring the information through and the thing about preparing in a way like that well I know a lot of people do they can sit and meditate and get all their information sorry I'm just trying to balance the volume sometimes for longer reads I, I like something like a sound bowls or a drum in the background to kind of help myself and it's um chantress 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 siba who does like light language they're just very meditative and beautiful so that's going to be on in the background um i'm better at channeling information in the moment because when i sit and get my downloads they come so detailed they want to be fleshed out so it's almost better to just receive them when I'm ready to speak about them or write about them because then I can flesh them out in whatever way they want to be elaborated on so I actually only have a few brief notes <laughs> the message is going to come through as it needs to but when I was channeling and as I've been preparing for the last few weeks to do this reading it's like I get a lot of information and then it boils down and I'm left with like one sentence um, which is interesting. And then I carry that forward and kind of like add it to the pile. So there's definitely some themes and some things that I know I'm going to be speaking on, but I'm going to let whatever needs to come through, come through for this one. So how it's going to look is that I'm just going to do a little grounding body scan. I'm going to ring the chime a little bit, and then I'm going to do a run through of all four quarters for the year 2024. I worked with the energy of Nostradamus. He was a seer um, in the 15th century. And he gave me basically a punchline or a focus for each quarter. And it was really specific. So I'm going to go through that. And then each quarter gets a star seed oracle and an animal spirit. <clears throat> and then after that, I'm going to kind of just start free channeling through a bunch of stuff that I've been picking up on that I want to impart for the collective. Um, messages of things of what's to come based on how the energy is going to be shifting and kind of where that's going to locate you as far as where you're at within your ascension or awakening and how it's going to feel and how it's going to appear. Um, in general terms, our lives are very different, but there are collective, collective massive, massive shifts happening. So I'll get into that, um, and I'll do that with these normal cards. And I, I think this has the potential to just be like two hours long, and I don't want that. I want it to be an hour or under, so I'm going to try to be succinct. Um, I'm also going to walk through some stuff. Like I said, there's things that I just personally want to leave in 2023. Um, when I said that, I kind of thought that it meant I was going to be talking through things on the channel in the way that I do to make a point out of certain things. And that's not really how it's going to be because I've been doing a lot of processing personally in the ways that I've needed to. And a lot of movement as well and just thinking about, and I'm going to be talking about this as we get into it, but light body, um, light body activation and what that means and the upgrading of DNA and all these different things. So for my own personal healing and closing out of 2023, I've been working through a lot of that information personally because it's not meant to be collective messages. Even if I can spin collective messages out of it, there are certain things that are obviously very personal. Um, however, there is one thing that does need to be shared. Um, I've confirmed multiple times that it is okay and beneficial to talk about it on the channel, so I'm going to be doing that. Um, I might cry. I don't think so. But if I do, then I do. <laughs> All right. 
Again, if you don't want to do the grounding exercise, then just go to the description box because there will be timestamps in there of when like I move on to each next section of what it is we're doing here today. Oh, last thing I forgot to say is that at the very end of the reading, you get to ask three questions or you get to ask one question and pick a card, but I'm going to be pulling three of these guys. Angel answers, okay, which are best suited to yes or no questions or issues that you've been mulling over with your intuition and you want like an additional clarifier on. So three cards, three questions, or one card, one question and you pick a card, one, two, or three. Um, so that is at the end. All right, this is not the right track, I'm sorry. I really tried to ground and set everything up the way that it needed to be, but the way that she's doing this, shh, 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 it's too activating for me. Like it makes me wanna, um... let's get some heart chakra meditation going. This one's my favorite. Ah. <sighs> Good. Good, good, good. Okay. Okay, so as I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna move light down through my crown chakra. Um, I'm gonna imagine myself being illuminated and all of this angelic healing light kind of covering all the cells in my body and everything that's going on. And I'm gonna walk through that so that this can be done in tandem. If you wanna like sit and close your eyes, I can walk you through a body scan. If you don't wanna do that again, just go and skip to the part where I start talking about other stuff. But it's gonna be a visualization really, but I don't think I've ever said this. <laughs> I think it's assumed, but with any visualization when it comes to movement in the body or subtle energies, it is also recommended, but somewhat inevitable that you're envisioning some type of sensation. When you visualize, you're feeling the way that something is changing sensation in the body. So I'm gonna talk about certain things, but be very, alert to the subtle sensations that you might be feeling with energy movement in the body. It can be like tingly, it can be different changes in temperature, it can feel like, you know, hot rushes or um, uh, there could be twitches, right, or muscle spasms. So all of these things are indicative of energy shifting in the body. Um, and they might be different than, you know, mine or whatever, however you're feeling feeling stuff, so um, pay attention to what your sensations and feelings are over anybody else's. Okay. Envisioning a light coming from above. It's gonna shine down onto the top of your head like a spotlight. The light that I envision is so bright, so bright that it's hard to discern. And because of that, it breaks into different colors. There's little fragments of almost like mica or glitter in the light that is rainbow and reflects all light. So there's lots of colors, but they're hard to see because it is so bright. 
It's a really bright light. Some people like to use bright silver. Some people use bright white. Bright white is the highest healing unconditional love frequency. And then gold light is another popular one. So imagining that coming down over the crown chakra. Thinking of it like honey. So it's moving slowly over the top of your head. Coming around the spaces of your skull that sit behind your ears as it makes its way towards the back of your skull. Moving down the back of your neck. Simultaneously, this light is coming down over your forehead, moving into the sockets where your eyeballs sit. Feel all of the fine muscles around the eye area softening. There's a lot of tiny muscles in the eyes. A lot of people hold tension in the eyes, the eyebrows, the forehead. This light is coming over the cheekbones and moving into the jaw space, as well as coming through the core of your body to start filling the space within the throat chakra. Imagine this light softening your shoulders Imagine a motion of rolling them back. Because as you sit tall on your spine and roll your shoulders back, it will open your heart chakra and your shoulder blades will be like the pages of a book seated down along either side of your spinal column. So as this light moves down your back, it's coming down the front of your body, allowing you to open your shoulders. It moves into the heart chakra, into your core. I'm getting that some people might wanna do like raising one arm straight up and then just doing really gentle side bend right now and then switching, putting that arm down, raising the other arm up and just bending over a little bit. Feel this energy start to touch into your hips and the core base areas of your spine, your abdomen, where all of your organs live. This meeting point between the lower and the upper halves of the body is a serious energy center for people. When bad things happen to us and we are not safe, when we are harmed, when we are hurt, if a lot of small things happen over time and add up, it results in a lack of security and safety in the body. If we don't perceive it as unsafeness in the body, it may still translate to not being safe in the body by way of not lodging, dislodging implants or energetic density from the root and the sacral chakra so that we can sink more fully deeply into our physical vessel. A lot of people are not able to sink fully deeply into their physical vessel. And as an extension of that, once this light is seated in your body and you can see yourself like a container that would be like a jar full of fireflies, so you're all lit up. And sometimes what you'll find when you're moving light through the body is that there are sticking points. For me with chronic knee pain, if I'm moving light through my body, it's hard to move it through my knees. And you might say, well, I'm just imagining it moving through the knees. You can feel it. For me, I get a lot of tingles. I get a lot of warmth. I can feel it like a curtain, like a raining curtain of energy moving through me. So when that stops in a certain place or it feels a little bit harder to continue bringing it through, then you need to just spend a little bit more time warming with your visualization and your attention to the area 
warming the energy into that zone to be able to continue moving it beyond that space because it's taking a little bit more energetic devotion. That's kind of a lovely word for this in order to be able to move through that density that's in that place. So you just wanna take your time with that and give it the time that it deserves. I tend to be able to clear my body very, very quickly because I do it a lot. So thinking of the base of the spine, the root chakra, imagine if you would like a magic wand with a, with a tip that's lit up or E.T.'s finger when he says phone home and he's got that glowing bulb on the end. Imagine that light that we've brought in from the crown, from the heavens, from the upper realms, in through our whole body and now it's like a glowing bulb at the base of the spine. That is going to root all the way into the center of the earth. This is the meaning of kite and anchor when I talk about those symbols. It is a challenge or it takes discipline or it takes time for many and most people to be able to connect with very high vibrational light frequencies and still be able to root it fully down deeply into the earth. This is more attainable now because it is not just the people of earth, but it's earth's frequency that's changing. There's so much stuff that's been done to interrupt that frequency of heavenly upper realms down into the physical presence of earth, which is the humans, the life force, the people, the physical manifestations of earth and Earth's body, Earth's planetary body, bringing that energy all the way down. This is a restoration, right? Earth has a memory. I talk about trees sometimes and, and, and the passage of time from a tree's perspective. Earth is very privy to her own histories, but they're a little bit quicker from her point of view. So there's a big restoration happening with people being able to hold frequency that sustains us, this life force energy that comes from outside Earth, Earth just being one part of the bigger cosmic web, and anchoring it in so that we may be beings who are interdimensionally connected and understanding of our place within the great cosmic web, outside of the way that we have been conditioned and suppressed, to forget that, to not honor that. So just to that note, I'm going to be doing a lot more type of guided meditation stuff. I mean, I have a microphone and, and all sorts of stuff to like really use my voice to help people fall asleep, uh, whatever it may be, lots of types of subliminal things that I've been wanting to record. And I've recorded several of them actually and never posted them because as with anything I do, it's important for me to use the things that I can offer to others to heal myself before I can do it for other people. And so that's been a big theme with tone healing this year for me, um, myself as well, as well as the collective, I've been going through a huge throat chakra upgrade. For me, it's just been being able to talk freely and not feel like it's a bad thing to do. You know, it's okay to trust my information at this point and be confident in allowing that to be shared. So I've done a lot of throat, throat clearing, but the coming year for me is gonna involve a deeper level of throat clearing where I sometimes talk about the carbon-based DNA versus the crystalline DNA and how receiving different light codes and having them be activated actually changes your physical body. Um, my vocal cords are gonna be activated as, as well as other people's. And I think about that woman, Ch Chantra Siva, or like Shekinah Rose, they do have the ability to hold angelic frequency that can heal people in their vocal cords. And that's something I'm gonna be doing as well later in the year. All right. So I hope you liked that. Um, the comments are on now, by the way. I believe. 
Well, I think I have to turn them on per video, but if, if there's anything, just, just leave comments, I guess. I'm used to saying like, email me. <laughs> leave me a comment if certain things resonate with you. I would love that. Okay, so. All right, I'm being told that we're actually gonna just go ahead, shuffle the Animal Oracle and the Starseed cards, and I'm gonna pull one for each blindly. And then as I go through the quarters, I will talk about what those results are that we find. Um, another thing that I'll share while I'm shuffling, because I have to shuffle, is that I, I, I was slapped in the, in the face with a fish, if you will, by my guides the other day with a realization, or it was kind of a thought experiment. It was kind of a back and forth. By the way, slapped in the face of the fish is, is a vision that I had that I just imparted for whoever it was meant for. But nobody emailed me about that, and I'm wondering if it didn't resonate with anybody or my viewer isn't out there yet. I think there's a chance it could be for somebody in the future who sees that video and it's a synchronicity for them at the time that they see it, but it could be six months from now, who knows? Um, you know, I always have these like disclaimers cause it's so strange to just post to an audience when you don't know who you're connecting with. And I think that's okay. Um, of course it's okay. Of course it's okay. But it's, it's like, I, I saw myself sitting down with a bunch of people, but it was individually. So I saw myself having all these one-on-ones, just rapid fire, like envision speed dating. Okay, so I saw myself, <laughs> saw myself kind of speed dating through all my various viewers. And it was made clear to me, it was like, they were asking me, who do you think is out there who's gonna find this information? If it doesn't resonate with them, they're probably gonna move on immediately. So if I had a one-on-one -on -one with any individual person who views my videos, there's there's hardly anything that they could, you know, say or possess energetically where I would be in the position to be providing these disclaimers, you know? It's almost like it revealed to me that it's just me and myself, you know? Nobody cares if I, if I say things, if I don't. I mean, of course, there's the whole sensitivity around, like, content and community guidelines and being shadow banned and all of the very, like, tricky stuff to navigate. And that is what I, what I tend to think about when I filter myself, but... Aside from that, it's like, I'm really the only person who has to give myself permission or who is, you know, disagreeing or not, but it's because every time I say something, I'm immediately provided with all the various ways that, that my message could be misinterpreted by people who don't know better or are hearing it a, a different way. And so my inclination is to get ahead of those and say, if you think this and that and that and that, but you simply cannot prevent misunderstanding and seeing that individually, if I were to be individual with each one of my viewers, I would come to realize that there's, um, I mean, there's, it's, it's really just more of like a personal thing. I don't need to kind of fear, fear, but more so just like give space and attention for all of these side avenues. Cause it's just, it's going to become increasingly exhausted to try to, in exhausting and exhausted exhausted that was like a slip of the tongue but it's an exhausted thing to do for me right trying to anticipate how people could disagree with me so that I can get ahead of it I'm leaving that habit in 2023 you might see me do it for a few <laughs> few weeks or you know a month or so but I'm really gonna try to stop doing it and of course anything we want to stop doing that we're trying to stop doing we stop doing when it's time to stop doing it Everything in divine timing. Everything in divine timing. Before I get into um, the Q1, and I'm going to pull these cards for each quarter, I want to just touch again on something that I said in the reading before last, where it's like there's a restlessness. I recorded a reading on Christmas Day, and I was like, I just want it to be over. I'm ready to get back out there. I think a lot of people feel that way right now because there's a lot of... Um, There's a lot of things, it's, it, it, there's something felt 
that's out there on the other side of this holiday season and it's almost like we want to just get to it or or we don't we don't know you know we want to live in christmas forever and not go towards the new it's a it's a weird feeling though um so if that's how you feel just know that i oh wait these are for okay sorry one more shuffle on these and then we'll be ready to go um i'm feeling it too and it is a collective energy so if you're struggling with it, if you're feeling it to the extent where you have like anxiety or you're like, oh my gosh, like how am I, like, uh, who knows? Um, well, it would be more so just you're unhappy right now or you have some kind of resentment or um, low tolerance for what this time of year is about, what a lot of people are doing right now, which is like togetherness, commu not community, but really just like small communities, right? Groups, gatherings, loved ones, um, celebration, being together, all of that, if that's not your pace or your speed right now, because you're going through some things. I mean, the advice would be to acknowledge It's uh, the advice would be to take stock of how much has changed for you this year and understand how deeply transformative this year has been and try to cultivate this sense. Maybe this time of year isn't like what you thought it would be or, or you don't you don't you're not enjoying it as much as you usually do or you just want to get to the new year already. There's a very deep need for pause and reflection that's going to help to kind of dispel and um, detangle what what you might be perceiving as being about other people or other things. It's probably not. It's probably for lack of sitting with just how much you have been through and what has changed. All right. So this is Q1. I'll save it because we're doing that first. This is Q2. This is Q3. This is Q4. So we'll get to those when we get to them. Oh, very concise. Um, very concise message that I heard when it comes to Q1. It's all about posture. It's all about posture. It's all about posture. The first thing that popped into my mind when I got that message is, oh, like walking upright, like in the Bible, to walk upright, to walk upright. And I, this is coming into my mind, so I'll share it. I was walking my dog about um, three weeks ago or so, and something profound changed within me. It was like a light switch. Like I fully felt as if, because I was doing a lot of root chakra healing at that time, three weeks ago, whenever this was, I felt myself fully anchored into the earth, into my body, and fully tethered. And I feel that way when I'm seated, when I meditate, but I was, I was walking, doing a walking meditation, and I could feel the sustaining of this connection, kite and anchor, while I was walking. And I've talked about my knee issues at length at this point. If you don't know, I have them <laughs> without boring you with the details. And I haven't been able to run or do um, more high intensity level exercise for several years. And it was on that day and I was walking my dog. I started jogging with him because I was dressed for sport. <laughs> and um, I ran or I lightly jogged with dog on leash for about a quarter of a mile, which is pretty good for me. It's not too far at all, I know that, but um, I don't I don't run, I can't. In fact, there's a possibility that my knees would just give out and I'll crumple to the ground like a, you know, bunch of toothpicks. So I have to be gentle, but it was this profound thing that clicked in where I have been, as many of you are, developing a strengthened connection to how this high frequency new energy has come into your physical vessel and it's changing you. I mean, the energy is like automatic, right? It comes. And then our bodies are like, what do we do? And that's why we, you know, there's like, there's weird stuff to sort out physically, 
but our minds are involved. So we're like, oh no, I have to, I have to go do this. I have this, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. And the more we can sit with our own process and try to see what's connected as far as like emotions and a stabbing pain in the, in the area, you know, there are these connections that we can work through. So when I'm talking about posture, in 2023, it has a lot to do with the grounding meditation and the exercise that we did in the beginning where there's going to be a need, if nothing else, to have that upright spine within your own body. It's going to be a huge source of power for a lot of people simply because whatever it is that you go to do, talk about, want to get going or uh, I, there's, it, it's literally everything, but I'm trying to throw out examples so people can kind of understand like it could be about communication, it could be about organization, it could be a macro thing, it could be a small thing, like standing your ground or saying something that you feel may, may not go over well, but you really do think it's the right thing to say. All of this is going to come from being able to strengthen this connection of the chakra system, really. And why it's such a big deal is because when you're connected to... When you're disconnected from the pure channel of spiritual energy moving through you grounding into the earth that is a circuit that doesn't have space for all of these interrupting frequencies that we have on earth that a lot of people are bound and trapped by so when that's the case and then we have people moving away from that they kind of, it's it's hard to be in the in-between it's hard to be in the in-between I could say that from 2012 until now, I've been in that in-between. Not everybody's journey has to be that long, though. <laughs> My jury's still out, right, on why all of the things that have happened to me have happened the way that they've happened, but it happened for a reason, and I'm, I was supposed to have a very long awakening journey. And, and I know that other people were hit the way that I was hit in 2012. Like, all systems go. But then, of course... It takes a long time to be able to hold and stabilize and continue, right, without having some type of interference come in from those lower vibrational systems and energies that seek to continue to sever that connection or prevent it from becoming whole and healed and strengthened. Side note, that's what my work is about, trying to help people hold, strengthen, and continue the connection. Like, I mean, in, in a personal session capacity without having to subject yourself to having different things that might take you away from developing the spiritual connection, even if they fix your symptoms in some regard. And of course, as with anything, please do seek out the psychological, medical, and pharmaceutical support that you feel is necessary um, for what it is you're going through. So because what we're going to be experiencing in 2024 has so much of the old paradigms crumbling, it's going to be harder for even people who have developed their whole entire lives or generationally, 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 there's only 3D existences. If that starts to crumble and there's nothing else to go to and, and all of the things in the world are telling us like, well, all of that's crazy. Those are the... The crazy people then then they don't want to go to that like you have to break down either the system is crumbling or the conception or the perception or the ideology around what's acceptable what's what's evil what's positive what's this what's that that will break down so there's like 4d things that are very active crumbling systems the 3d things are crumbling it's going to be imperative for somebody who has a bigger vibrational field or the ability to expand their aura and affect people. You will feel this. You will feel this for the first quarter because if I was in a room with 20 people and there was absolute chaos for some reason, I would be doing a lot of energetic work. I simply would be. I know that because it happens automatically. You cannot come near me physically and not be affected energetically, number one. Number two, I would not find that comfortable. In order to survive and be okay and potentially help, right? In order to feel like I can help if there's a problem, I need to feel good like I'm, like I'm good inside and ready to offer because we can't offer unless we feel good. 
and well <laughs> you get what I mean but that's a uh, prone to misunderstanding as well as with many things but I would do what I needed to do in that space to ensure like my defenses my shields are up I'm good so that if I go over to people who are drowning they won't push me under you know it's the life raft thing or like the Titanic thing with the people in the water there's going to be a lot of people who don't know what to grab onto and so if you are somebody who has this like spiritual fortitude and this energetic strength and you've been building it or you are starting to build it or you're experiencing that people are trying to push you under even now because it's probably already happening it's going to it's going to get more intense and so that's why we've been talking about boundaries for so long but more than that right for me if back to that experiment thought experiment room with chaos what am i doing well in my mind i'm probably using anecdotal that was a complete slip. I meant elemental. I'm just making sure that nothing wants to be said to that point. No. Um, elemental energy, right? To kind of like displace things or like create spaciousness or like soothe or ground in order to balance the space. So that's kind of how the whole quarter is going to be. The people who have the strength spiritually, I mean, this is why you were born. If you align with me, if you're similar to me, if you resonate with the things that I say, you have the ability to be of great service and healing to the people around you. They might not know that yet. They might not care. It doesn't matter. It's, it's the only message that I got for the first quarter, okay? Which is another um, big deal because there's going to be things happening. And and all, all my guides want me to remember through the months of January, February, and March is posture. It's all about posture. It can be a metaphor. It can be literal. But it's going to be the reminder to just anchor back in, like top to bottom, if I'm connected and I'm grounded, then I can trust. Then I can trust. Oh, I don't, ugh. it's an example that I'm going to share because if, if you saw, I don't watch uh, hardly anything anymore, but I was made aware of the fact that there's a documentary that came out on Netflix called like Mother God or something, or like One Love of God or something. And I find it right on schedule, right? I always talk about this where if there's something that's coming up naturally within the people, the system will churn out something and be like, that's not what you thought. Let's bastardize it. Don't go in that direction. Or here it is, but you have to pay for it. Uh, time travel will be that way in the future. You'll be able to pay, but you don't have to, just so you know. <laughs> um... This documentary, I mean, it's insulting personally to me just because I'm like, come on, you really have to put this stuff out there. It's a woman who, uh, you know, might have been a little mentally unstable for, for whatever reason, and it, it kind of started a cult. But the reason why I'm like, come on, is because she's a channel. She channels higher beings. However, hers, she believes that she's in touch with the spirit of Robin Williams and a bunch of other deceased celebrities that form some high council um, but it's totally unhinged because you look at like her vision board with all their faces on it and like Donald Trump is on there. Like he's not dead. You're not channeling him. Um, nor would you want to. Uh, and all of her followers, I mean, she she's drinking like silver supplement and her skin's turning blue and they think the spaceship's going to come down and Robin Williams is going to pick her up or something. And so after she dies, they just sit there with her body and he never shows up. It's, it's really disturbing stuff, but it's... Um, of course, with anything, right? Spiritual or professional, occupational, recreational, there's good and bad, there's dark and light. And it's a shame that they're, and they also did this with the Twin Flame documentary, right? They, they put it out there as if there are these things that are very um, culty and tainted, which I'm, I mean, so, so that could be true, but I'm saying for the public consumption of it, right, on topics that are very complex and 
uh, not palatable for the public, for the general public, lack of education, lack of understanding. That's the information. So if anybody hears a little bit of it, they're like, oh, well, I saw that movie. So you must, you know, there's something there. So that's kind of right on schedule. But I, but I wanted to touch on like her condition, right? That woman. So if she was in that space, what I believe is happening to a woman like that, and I could compare that, that woman um, to a younger version of myself. But yeah, if you get really spiritually tapped in and you start seeing, feeling things that aren't there, and we can even see this, I believe, with like uh, schizophrenic patients and stuff. It's not that it's not real on some level. They could be having some interdimensional bleed through. But if there's no context within the consciousness, no ability to strengthen the, the auric field and protect the energy, and make sense of what it is that's entering your energetic field, then you become um, very susceptible to energetic interference. Different entities can latch onto you. Dark beings, like it's um, incredibly important as your energy expands and you start to experience new things to just strengthen all your boundaries energetically too. It's not just person to person. Um, selenite is the universally clearing stone. It will clear your other stones. Black tourmaline will keep you grounded, rooted, anchored, as well as, I just heard it and then it went away. Which one? What's it called? Okay, well, shungite is what I'm hearing. Um, moss agate. That's more of like a heart. Um, I can put, so on the website I'll be doing, um, Put a pin in that. Right, anyway, um, so in my belief, if I were to if I were to look at that woman and be like, "Well, what happened here?" Because a lot of people would be like, "Ew, she that that whole story it's it's weird, right? It's kind of uncomfortable. Like, what went on there?" I actually think that she was spiritually or psychically gifted, but she was seriously infiltrated by a lot of different energies, and I I know what that's like. So if if you're able to process guidance but you're not able to protect yourself and filter out any of the crap or like the little gremlins. Think of it as like mosquitoes too. Just energies you don't want, you don't need. Um, your fire has to be so bright that if they come near you, they'll burn. They'll just singe. And that is how I've become. And there's a serious difference to how I feel, like my anxiety. Like I know that those things are not interacting with me and they're not able to touch me. But when you don't know what's attached to you and you transmit this information or follow your guidance, right? Follow your intuition. Then it can lead you astray. And it's not that you're not tapping into something. It's that you need to be able to protect yourself. I'm already at 42 minutes and I haven't even gone through quarter one. So I'm going to try to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, but just to sum that up before we get into our cards, no matter what the changes are and, and remember you're going to be, there's, I think there's some stuff, big stuff that's going to be changing in the first three months on a collective level that we'll be able to watch. I mean, think about this. Do you remember in October when I said, well, it was the end of September and I was sitting on the, the dock by the water and I was like, this is the last stop before a big uptick, October, November, December. These months flew by. October was deep. <laughs> the end of October, there was some deep, profound things, right? I think collectively we can agree with that. November flew by, didn't exist. <laughs> December, you know, the energy changes how we perceive the passage of time. That's going to be the case for January, February, and March. But I think they're going to feel kind of... Um, they're going to feel like their own year. So it's going to be this kind of inverse thing where they take forever, but time's flying by, okay? And there's a visual that I'm going to get to. This is a good segue, actually, for Q2. Because the visual that I was provided for Q2 uh, is something I'm going to draw, actually. And before we get there, I'm going to have to pull, pull these cards so that we can touch on them. So no matter what it is, personal collective, global. The advice for Q1 is remembering about posture, what it means to walk upright, what it means to be able to carry this light and not let it get untethered, right? Anchor it in. 
know yourself and your energy and where it begins, where it ends, it doesn't mean that you don't feel feelings and get anxious too. It just means that you're very quick and diligent about allowing them to be felt and releasing them. You have got to be kidding me. This is the exact same card I did in my short the other day. And you saw me shuffle these cards, right? It came right back out. It's White Raven Spirit. Trust in the magic. Starkeeper. You can't make it up. Cosmic Ancestor. Seed the light by staying grounded. That's just what I said. If you are somebody who understands my messaging and gets what it is that I'm talking about and how incredibly important this is, it's very exciting, but it's no joke. Like you, it's a big deal to be somebody who can do this. Um, I'm not saying that it's like, you're the caretaker for all your people. They're going to come running and you're going to cast your magical net. No, they might like give you hell. You know, it might be hard to be somebody in this position who has a lot of energetic influence. I pray that's not your situation. If it is, it has to do with the, the, the lessons or the reasons why you're around those people and what it is that you need to be able to strengthen within yourself so that they're not able to affect you or take you into a space where you're compromising your power and your gifting. If you're having trouble with that in any way, then please do consider booking a session with me because I have a lot of um, ways to help with that type of particular struggle. And the particular struggle I am talking about is being a black sheep, you know, being able to, what is it called? Cosmic ancestor? Oh, star keeper. Um, you know, not succumbing to just like societal pressures or the pressures that you feel in the groups that you're, that you're in and being able to be different, even if you're not understood, that's quite hard, right? Because we do rely on the perceptions of others. When other people understand us, we feel seen when we feel understood. That's really important. And there's people out there who have not, there's parts of people that have not been understood since they were children. They've never been understood. Parts of people that have never been held or seen. And if that's the case, then you don't really understand or see those parts within you. It's hard to see and understand your own self if there's no one else out there to mirror it or validate it to you. That's why I let all of my like personal stuff um, onto this channel is because like not everybody will relate to all these the different, you know, experiences, but it's more so about like the fact that there's so many layers to everything, you know, and how we come to strengthen and know ourselves. You're an ancient keeper of the stars, here to anchor and seed your light in your unique way. You've likely been in, on, incarnating on Earth for some time, dedicated to an era of awakening and bringing about a long-awaited shift in the planet's evolution. We're at a tipping point now. The survival of Earth and all its species is coming to a head. The more grounded you remain during this transitional period, the more helpful you'll be. The more you'll tend to the flames of your own heart, and the more love you'll anchor onto the planet, the wisdom of the stars is imprinted in your soul. The more soul fragments you call home, the more this wisdom is seated here. You may be called to be in different places in the world to anchor this light. Perhaps by taking a trip or living in a certain location, you may also find yourself experiencing awakening symptoms. The more grounded you remain, the more stable Earth's energy will become and the less reactive humanity will be. You're here for a double mission, to grow as an indiv individual and as part of a larger collective that's bringing about a shift in frequency. Trust that you can be in the world, but not of it and lead a truly glorious life. Um, I mean, I don't, that it was so spot on, right? What are the odds? This, this card, this deck was published years ago. 
but I'm pulling this card for the first quarter of 2024. I mean, that message is always true. We are in a big pivotal shift. In a hundred years, people are gonna look back and call the whole decade, you know, one chunk of time. We're living through it, so we forget that. But 2024, first quarter, that's the energy. And I'm also being um, moved to share something about a past life that I've never spoken on. Um, to be honest, I'm not quite sure if it was a, it was a past life, okay? But I was remote viewing it um, in the astral. This happened about two years ago, two and a half years ago, and it was deeply disturbing. It shook me to my core because I did not want to be there, but I wasn't fully lucid. I was in kind of a semi-lucid state where I knew I was dreaming, but I couldn't really leave. And this dream, it was about, um, well, it was a, in this past life, I'll say this. I was basically part of some kind of um, cult or it was like the Manson family, okay? And my dream, it took place in the, um, I don't know, maybe the 17th century or so. And I was in, in this group and we were all men. I was a teen boy. I was like a teen guy. And we had a leader and there were other members and we all lived in the same house, but we did all sorts of, it was just dark. I don't want to go into it, but it was dark. And this dream, I had this dream in the course of one night, but I was there for like three weeks, um, which that can happen sometime if you're familiar with astral travel and stuff. And I mean, one, one like gruesome detail that really like scarred me that I don't like to think about is that like we were, a, we were a violent bunch. I always was on the periphery and, and deeply felt uncomfortable to my core. The reason why I'm sharing this is because this was a lifetime for me where I was spiritually, I, I was somewhat spiritually activated. Now, of course, if you think back on the reason why we've had so many past lives, I've never been illuminated or awakened or, or in the know as I am now, because this is the one that I'm in now. <laughs> All the other ones, like that man in Asia, I shared about this guy in my quantum hypnotherapy healing regression. I had, you know, he wasn't awakened to his own experience. That's a different version, different timeline, different simultaneous self that my soul inhabits to inform this one, to inform this one. So this boy in this murder gang this horrible thing it was like he knew that he didn't want to be there and he really felt affected because he was a sensitive soul he was probably you know probably a water sign or something he hated all of it and it it scarred him it scarred him and he had to do all of it and there was this uh like this huge building, not a really big building, but it was a multiple story building and we lived in it. Um, but this was the olden days too. So the architecture was different. There was a, a dirt floor in one of the rooms, a dirt floor. And it was basically a, um, a grave of some kind, but it was a shared grave. And so it was repeatedly like um, dug up and refilled and, and, and they would, the, the people in this dream, they would walk around it, do things. It was a lot of really dark stuff that I was exposed to in this dream. It was a living hell. It was a nightmare. Um, and my soul in that, in that incarnation was crying out for the light, uh, and there was no way out because my induction into that, it was punishable by, by death to leave that group. And so I was either, you know, I was, it, it, it was, it was all going to end in death one way or another. Um, really dark, <sighs> but, but <laughs> it's about, um, I mean, I guess I'm sharing it. I'm, I was moved to share it because it can be really hard to honor what it is you feel inside if you're different from the people around you. All right. So here's the image, the visual. That's Q1, trust in the magic. 
again, as everything starts to unfold, and I'll share this. This is the, um, the, the quote, the statement that I was given for the whole year of 2024, okay? Be at peace with the changes to come, for they were scripted in the light of the sun. Okay, so trust in the magic. When things get hard, remember where you're coming from. You know, are you holding yourself up upright inside in your body so that you can feel the subtleties? It's all as within, so without, as above, so below. I'm just doing a crude sketch, okay? Because that's all that's needed. All right, check this out. What is it? What is this? Oh shit, that actually, I've been looking for that for a long time. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, Q2. What I saw about quarter two, these are all people. This is a human body. This is the same guy, okay? So this is you, this is me. This is, this is rotational activity. Now, rotational activity, we could see that as a schedule, as a day, you know? Eat, sleep, repeat. This is habitual life and living. And this is the manifested reality that takes shape around said individual. So this web, this thing, looks like fencing, right? 360 view, it, it encompasses this individual, it surrounds him. Day after day, he looks around, he sees, uh, I know it's kind of interesting, I tend to say he instead of she, um, but I think that's because the fool's journey in the tarot is, is the fool. And it's the hero's journey, so. Hmm. What's going to happen Q2 is that this, this matrix, these things, right? And there is a correlation that a lot of people tend to overlook or not understand because of all the misconstrued stuff around quantum this, quantum that. Serious correlation between this inner loop and this inner loop, outer, outer loop. So Q2 is for people to deeply understand start to deeply understand on a bigger level. Now, this is going to affect different people in different ways based on your level of awakening and all that. For people who are very, very um, on it and, and expanding right now and doing things and feeling good and pushing through all of the stuff and ready to create stuff that's going to be of benefit to what's going to be happening in the world in the next few years, you're going to be able to manifest very, very quickly. Very quickly. And I'm not talking about like little things because sometimes when I was younger... I would be like, I'm going to manifest uh, an ice cream cone. And then, you know, a couple hours later, somebody would give me, give me like a chocolate truffle and be like, hey, do you want this? <laughs> and I'd be like, close enough. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd do tests and see how good I was at bringing my desires into the physical without any action, just with the power of my mind. And so if you've been doing that, if you're working on it, um, it's going to be able to... Well, here's the other part to this. If you've been that person, then obviously you've already been manifesting. So there's going to be big things that you, you're going to be able to bring in. For people who are less awakened, they're going to start to have a lot of breakdown, right? Because if they're constantly toxic, toxic, self-deprecating, in victim mindset, da 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 This is going to start to, they're, they're going to start to see the correlation between this. Maybe not quickly, maybe not all at once, maybe not at all. But if they don't see it at all, then the universe, I mean, really it's the laws of how things are cause and effect and how we're co-creating and manifesting. It's going to get worse, right? If, if there's, because if we don't have the ability to kind of reason through, the emotions will heighten. The, the place from which these people are manifesting their realities will become a little bit tormented if we've got repeated towers and stuff. So there's going, there might be chaos, right? 
But the second part to this vision that I saw is this outer thing like melting away, like moving into warp speed, like like it turns around this so quickly that everything within that inner loop must, excuse me, also change. So something about Q2 is about keeping up, catching up, <laughs> with what's going to be happening collectively. Um, I'm going to keep this picture here because I'm being told I'm going to use it again. Another thing I want to point out right now is that today, 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 <laughs> I get confused so easily. Do, 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 do. These are like steps. This day, this day, this day, today. That's very special sequencing. Particularly because this is one of the months that has double digits, so it's like loaded, right? That's like six numbers, six individual digits. The sum of each, six, 12, three. Three, which is a powerful number of spiritual energy with the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. So everything that's going to be changing is about getting the collective via the individual, because this is how God's source love energy is trying to realize itself. Continue to expand and make different things that help us realize ourselves realize I'm going to save a lot of information. So actually I'm going to be taking two weeks off. I'll probably post shorts and updates and update the meme gallery on wordsmithoftheimperial.com, but I'm not going to sit and do a big reading until mid January after this. Um, I'm going to miss doing it. So I'm a little bit like, Oh, why not? <laughs> it's important for my energy. Um, so if, if you're going to miss them, I'm going to miss it too. I'm sorry <laughs> how it has to be. You see, I have to clear out some stuff and sit with the new energy and acclimate. And I'm very excited. I'm going to be actually really busy. My other breaks have been for taking breaks, but I have personal stuff to work on. And three of those personal projects is finally getting the um, deep dives that I've been wanting to cover on the website for your perusing enjoyment. So I'm going to be doing those, finally posting them. And there are certain things that I am not going to because it doesn't go very well for me when I do talk about them on YouTube. Uh, going to be doing all that there. So let's get back to it. There's that visual, okay? And the information that came out with that visual of this, this, this rotational cyclical life and then everything warp speed around it. It's kind of like I said earlier, as within, so without. It's like from the outside in, from the inside out. It's a it's a funny feeling, really, because it's going to happen. It's a fractal. It's going to happen in so many different ways. But either the world around people is going to change so much that they have no choice but to change, or they're going to change so much that everything changes around them, or a little bit of both. I mean, it kind of is inextricably linked. But sink or swim, sink or swim is the other message that I heard and then um, feeling in the flow is the best thing that we can do to to deal with sink or swim energy because it kind of demands something out of us like if you don't swim you're gonna sink well being in the flow right we know about like if you were to kind of just hold your breath and let your body go limp maybe a current would take you and it would suck you away and there are different ways to embrace energy, embrace change, and it often is counterintuitive where if there seems like this 
uplifting current that's coming in to ask us to like rise up and engage ourselves in a more proactive or involved way perhaps however oops like however many people are assembling <laughs> assembling to do something the the appropriate action that you might feel inside may go against that again. So there has to, this has to do with being upright within yourself because there's going to be um, the need to kind of stick to your guns, I think. Now, the two big camps, well, what I, what I got around Q2 is this dichotomy between feeding or fighting, feeding or fighting, feeding or fighting. What does it mean? Fighting things or feeding into them. And what's interesting is that they're, they sit on two opposites. Like, are you feeding it? Are you fighting it? It's still the same thing. It's not really opposite. It's the same thing. And this, I, I foreshadowed this by talking about a few things a couple videos ago where I was like, you're going to see this. It's really, oh yeah, I used this as an example. Like all these different opinions and things and like the root of the issue does remain the same. And instead of taking it tenderly and cracking it open like a geode and letting it be examined under a microscope for solution based thinking what we do is we start little 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 bonfires right and we throw things into them and we ask people to come over and get involved and it continues to curry the public favor and keep people distracted in these heightened emotional states where they don't feel like they have any power and we're waiting to hear what the next word is and feeding or fighting basically it's the illusion that you have to do one or one one or the other and you don't I'm going to leave it at that for Q2. I'm going to put these cards away. Q2, what do we got? Star bathing, light body, crystal grid, transmission, activation. Claim your independence. I told you. 13, 4. Yeah, 13 reduces down to four. So it's like four of wands card is what I'm seeing. That, that stability, that kingdom. 11, 11, four of wands. Having the ability to have that within yourself so that no matter what happens, you are not being taken out of that space. And the people around you, like, they, they don't want, like, right? I'm not saying that every, anyone's doing things on purpose, but really it's about acknowledging that some people are not equipped they're simply not equipped to understand what it is you're doing and what you need to do as a result of that but if they push on you right for lack of understanding and you can't explain it to them it gets very particular with like how can you still be very compassionate set your boundaries but do what you need to do because i think in a lot of cases people just end up caving to a person, right? Because if it's like the difference between somebody or some thing, we can put that something on hold. But I'm hearing that the guidance from within, the, the, the feelings that people are going to start to have from within, they're going to be too hard to ignore. And I, I mean, it's a general thing to say, but it pertains to a lot of things. So The stars are constantly showering emanations onto the crystalline grid of the earth. When things are in balance, the planet also sends information back up to the stars. Many star seeds have come to earth at this time. That makes me think of what I talked about in my quantum healing hypnotherapy regression session when I went to the rainforest in Bolivia and I found a stargate. And it goes, it connects all the way outside of that earth's atmosphere. And this connects to the first card we read around, like, if you go to a new place on the earth, it could cause profound, sudden awakenings or expansions within your energy. Many star seeds have come to earth at this time to help shift the planet vibrationally, to activate the ancient codes of wisdom that humanity has forgotten. And all of that information is stored in the crystalline grid. If you pull this card, you may be being called to begin working with the stars in the crystalline grid of the earth. Some people believe that the crystalline grid of the earth anchors divine cosmic frequencies onto the planet. You may be guided to journey to particular places on earth to unlock these cosmic codes with your presence. You may also be interested in a practice called star bathing. 
Oh, it says you can download a star bathing meditation at starseedoracle.me if you're interested. This card commonly arises because you're here to connect with the crystalline grid of the earth, either in your hometown or by traveling to other places without quite knowing why. It can also mean that your light body, the energy body in its highest form, is being activated. If this resonates, take things extra slow in order to integrate this change of vibration. Here's the activation. If you would like an activation, you can say I claim this or you can say I don't want to claim that. It's up to you. Here it is though. I open myself up to receiving the wisdom of the crystalline grid beneath me. May the stars in the earth inform and heal me. And as they do, may it heal the earth too. Very good. All right. I'm going to have to do a part two. That's okay. I'll do a part two. Yeah, I'll do a part two. And I have to go to the bathroom, actually, so I'll pause, and then I'll keep recording, and I'll do part two next. Okay. <laughs> Be back on in a second. Thanks for watching.